my name is Dana Castro, and I'm an application specialist here at Brookhaven Instruments. In this video, I'll be guiding you through an alignment of our research-grade goniometer system. This video will be appropriate whether you're setting up a brand new system for the very first time, or you're realigning your current system. If you do not have our most updated alignment manual, please contact us at info at brookhaveninstruments.com because that manual must be used in conjunction with this video. The alignment process is very lengthy and requires your full attention. If more time is spent throughout the alignment to make sure each step is performed properly, this will actually prevent you from having to go through the whole process again, so please take your time. Please have these tools available. A set of metric hex keys, 1.5 to 5 millimeter, a flashlight, a flathead screwdriver, a ruler or measuring tape, safety glasses and gloves, a permanent marker, and methanol, lens paper, and cotton swabs for vat cleaning. If you're setting up a brand new instrument, this is what the base will look like. It ships with the steering lens attached. Using an M3 hex key, loosen the four set screws and remove the steering lens Remove the two shuffle plates by unscrewing the four brass knobs and set aside for later. Have these four screws and an M5 hex key ready for your first step. When placing your goniometer on the optical table, choose a spot that allows all parts of the instrument to be reached. Some users try to position it towards the center of the table to accommodate space for the swinging arm. Center the four holes on the base of the goniometer above four holes on the optical table. Finger tighten the four screws to hold the base in place. Locate the laser rail foot and its two screws. Place the laser rail foot on the optical table. You will want to position it at the end of your laser rail length, so use it as a reference. Using the laser rail foot screws, finger tighten to hold the laser rail foot in position. Slide the laser rail into place and position it flush to the laser rail foot on the base of the goniometer, going no more than 5 millimeters past the foot. Using your M5 hex key, tighten the laser rail in place with the two clamping screws on both laser rail feet. Tighten these completely so the laser rail will not move out of place. After fully tightening the clamping screws, completely tighten all six screws that were previously finger tightened using your M5 hex key. It is important that these are all fully tightened to prevent the goniometer from moving out of place. Look at the goniometer from underneath. You'll notice a small gap. This needs to be even all around and we will do this by centering what's called the XY table. Locate the four 6mm alignment pins, or an M5 hex key. Locate knobs 7A, 7B, and 7C. Unlock knob 7C. This is the brass one. Make slight adjustments to 7A and 7B until all the alignment pins fit evenly all around. If you are using an M5 hex key for this step, just make sure that it fits evenly all around the gap. If 
Then lock 7C. Locking will cause a small shift in the position of the XY table, so check how the pins feel after tightening and make further adjustments as needed. Once the XY table is centered, locate the black metal pot. Place the black metal pot into the Delrin base so that the knob 7A is centered between the two temperature nozzles. What can sometimes make the next step a little easier is to visually center the black metal pot in the Delrin base and gently tighten the three set screws around the Delrin base. Locate the three thin alignment pins. You'll notice that each alignment pin has a tapered end. Place the tapered end of each pin in the gap between the Delrin base and the black metal pot to help you center the black metal pot. Once it is centered, lock it fully in place by tightening all three set screws around the Delrin base. When centered, double check that knob 7A is still centered between the two temperature nozzles. Using an M2.5 hex key, remove the upright farthest from the laser rail. Set this aside for future steps. Locate the detector rail and its two screws. Using an M4 hex key, attach the detector rail. It can help to wiggle the rail while tightening the screws to ensure that it is assembled perfectly straight. Locate the clutch release and fine adjustment knobs. Unlock the detector arm by unscrewing the clutch release on the back of the instrument all the way. Rotate the arm to 180 degrees and re-tighten. Visually center the detector rail over the laser rail. You can do this as shown with the clutch released or use the fine adjustment knob. Another way to do this is by lining up the detached detector arm with the motor base. Looking from above, use the fine adjustment knob to bring the detector arm parallel to the motor base. After centering the detector rail, you may have to reset the angular scale. Unlock the sliding scale using an M2 hex key. Slide the scale so that it reads 180 degrees. Also reset the scale on the fine adjustment knob to reflect the new zero angle. Make sure when you tighten the knob back down, there should be a slight gap between the knob and the motor housing. Locate your laser, laser mount, its four screws and an M5 hex key. Note that one end of the mount has two holes. This is where the front of your laser should face. Place the laser over the four holes surrounding the center of the mount. Tighten the laser down with its four screws and an M5 hex key. Make sure to fully tighten all screws.
locate the laser controller, power cord, and interconnect cable. Place the laser mount at the end of the laser rail. Clamp down with the two locking feet. Connect the laser controller to power. Turn on the power switch on the back. Connect the laser to the controller with the interconnect cable. Turn the key on the front and the laser output light will illuminate, indicating the laser is on. Remove the detector rail. Reinstall the 2mm upright aperture. Locate the 2mm pinholes. Place one in each upright so that they are both facing towards the laser and tighten down with a locking screw. Unshutter the laser. To adjust the laser horizontally, loosen the four screws around the rectangular table. Slide the table back and forth to align horizontally. You may tighten the screws a little to keep in place for the next step. Loosen the two locking screws on either side of each brass knob. Rotate the brass knobs to adjust the vertical position of the beam. Rotate the knob simultaneously at the same speed to keep the laser level. You may have to go back and forth between adjusting the horizontal and vertical positions of the laser in order to get it to pass cleanly through both pinholes. Once the laser passes through both pinholes, tightly lock all screws. Alternate to ensure the laser continues to pass through both pinholes. Once the laser is tightened down, unlock the clutch and rotate the goniometer to 180 degrees and check that the laser passes through the back of both pinholes. If it doesn't, make sure you are definitely at 180 degrees. Otherwise, return to zero degrees and make further adjustments to the laser's alignment. Once aligned, the laser will cleanly pass through both pinholes and peer on the wall. At the end of the alignment manual, you will find three targets. Print your favorite one, and place the target on the wall so that it's centered on the laser image. 
Remove both 2 mm pinholes. Place the brass manifold over the black metal pot so that the tubes are at the back and screw in place with the three M4 by 25 flat head screws. Completely tighten these screws so the brass manifold doesn't move. This is the alignment needle. The top knob allows you to raise or lower the needle inside the housing. This needle is very delicate, so you have to be gentle with it and always store with the needle fully pulled inside the housing. Without this needle in perfect condition, you will not be able to align your goniometer. Carefully place the alignment needle in the brass manifold. Slowly lower the alignment needle into the path of the beam. An X will appear on the target. This means the laser is aligned. If there are any difficulties later in the alignment, you will not have to check the laser again. Locate the steering lens and a 1.5 mm hex key. The hex key must fit evenly all around. This is achieved by making slight adjustments to the vertical and horizontal adjustment knobs on the steering lens assembly. If you have a goniometer setup tool, locate it. This is the steering lens holder. Place the steering lens in its holder. Insert the setup tool as a spacer and tighten down with the four locking set screws using an M3 hex key. If you do not have a setup tool, use a ruler or measuring tape to measure 113 millimeters from the center of the vertical on the steering lens to the center of the adjustment knob on the needle. Unlock knob 7C and gently rotate the sample cell table. You may use the steering lens holder as a handle. Rotate the sample cell table while raising and lowering the needle until it appears that the needle tip is directly touching the laser beam. This will appear as an X on the target. Help visualize shut the lights. You may also place a 2 mm pinhole in the aperture closest to the laser to help see the X. When centered, lock knob 7C while holding the sample table in place. Once centered, remove the steering lens. Also remove the pinhole if you used it in the last step and lower the alignment needle once more into the path of the beam. If the beam is hitting the tip of the needle, an X should appear on the target. Remove the alignment needle. Using your M2.5 hex key, remove the screws and the brass manifold. Locate the Brookhaven labeled vat. To prevent any imperfections on the active area, please only handle by the bottom of the vat, the back of the vat, which is across from the Brookhaven label, or the upper rim, and please use gloves. If you see any smudges or dust on the vat surface, you can use methanol, lens paper, and a cotton swab to gently clean the area. Note the flat face of the vat. This will be facing toward the laser. Carefully place the vat into the black metal pot. You can put pressure towards the back of the vat since it's not an active measurement area, keeping the front free of scratches. Fill the vat with about 100 milliliters of decalin. Please wear gloves and safety glasses. Be sure not to splash or spill any decalin on the outside of the vat. Place a two millimeter pinhole in the upright nearest the laser. Turn out the lights. Place your fingers at the top rim of the vat and watch the back of the pinhole. You will see a beam that moves as you rotate the vat. Center that back reflection onto the pinhole. 
While maintaining the alignment of the back reflection, visually center the vat in the black metal pot. Once achieved, take a look at the laser image on the target. It should be more or less horizontally centered. What's most important is that the back reflection is aligned and the vat is centered in the black metal pot. Once achieved, gently tighten the three nylon set screws with a flathead screwdriver to lock the vat in place. Alternate to ensure that the vat stays centered and the back reflection stays aligned. Do not over tighten these screws. Tighten them just enough so that the vat will not move. Over tightening will damage the vat. Replace the brass manifold carefully. Do not hit any part of the vat with any part of the brass manifold. Lock down tightly. Place the alignment needle into the brass manifold. Replace the steering lens using the tool or measure 113 millimeters again as in step 29. Remove the pinhole. Vertically center the laser beam on the target using the vertical adjustment knob on the steering lens. Like in previous steps, you can replace the pinhole closest to the laser to make visualization easier. Now, using the horizontal adjustment on the steering lens, center the laser beam on the alignment needle. You will see an X. If you're having trouble with this step, take a look at the tip in step 37 of the alignment manual. Once completed, move the goniometer to 90 degrees and remove the second 2 mm upright aperture. Store this aperture and its screws in a safe place for future alignments. Locate these two detector rail screws. One has a stopper and it will be placed in the hole closest to the base of the goniometer. When tightening, alternate screws. It may help to wiggle the rail while tightening to ensure it is on straight. Tighten the detector rail completely so that it does not move from this point on. This is what we call the NDO. This assembly contains the detector optics. It must be positioned on the laser rail so that the center of knob 12B is 145 millimeters from the center of the alignment needle adjustment knob. Lock the NDO into place with a locking foot. You may mark the location on the detector rail with a permanent marker so that in the future you do not need to remeasure. Move the detector rail back to zero degrees and unshutter the laser if it was shuttered. Raise the alignment needle out of the path of the laser. Look at the face of the NDO and determine if the laser beam is vertically centered. If not, make small adjustments to the steering lens vertical adjustment. Move the NDO just off center using the fine adjustment knob to gain a reference point. Open the pinhole to three millimeters and set the filter wheel to open. Note knobs 12B, 12A, and 13A on the NDO, as well as the fine adjustment knob. Adjust these four knobs until the laser appears on the target. Then move the pinhole on the NDO to the one millimeter position and continue making adjustments until the image on the wall is centered on the target and is bright and round. 
You may need to walk the beam by adjusting the vertical on the steering lens and the NDO to bring the laser to the center of the target. Once this is done, move the NDO out of the way and check the steering lens with the needle again. You should see an X. Shutter the laser and turn the mirror adjustment knob on the NDO into the down position. Rotate the detector arm to 20 degrees. While shining a flashlight into the sample cell area, look through the eyepiece and center the alignment needle in the slit by adjusting knob 13A only. Rotate the detector arm to 155 degrees. Look through the eyepiece again while shining the flashlight into the sample cell area. Unlock knob 7C. Note how far the needle is from the center of the slit. Using knob 7A, move the needle half of that distance toward the center. Then fully center using knob 13A. Lock down 7C. Repeat steps 44 and 45 until the alignment needle is centered at both 20 and 155 degrees. Once the alignment needle is centered at both 20 and 155 degrees, move the detector rail to 90 degrees and lock. Unlock knob 7C. Look through the eyepiece and center the alignment needle in the slit using just knob 7B, and then retighten 7C. After making adjustments at 90 degrees, recheck 20 degrees and 155 degrees and make adjustments if necessary. Then check 90 again. Rotate the detector arm to 20 degrees. Open the shutter on the laser. Notice that the alignment needle is no longer in the path of the laser beam. Unlock 7C and rotate the sample cell table until the laser beam just touches the needle tip. Be sure not to adjust knobs 7A and 7B while rotating the sample cell table. You will see an X again. Lock down 7C. Raise the alignment needle. Rotate the detector arm to 0 degrees. Rotate the mirror adjustment. Adjust the knobs 12B, 12A, 13A, and the fine adjustment knob until the laser is centered and bright again. Reset the angular and fine adjustment knobs to zero degrees. Center the alignment needle in the slit of the NDO at all angles, the same as before. The center of rotation procedure may take several repetitions before everything is well aligned. At this point, the alignment needle will be centered at all positions when viewed through the eyepiece. The laser will touch the tip of the alignment needle, and the laser beam will form a bright circular pattern centered on the target when passing through the NDO. Locate the two shuffle plates and their four brass knobs. Note each shuffle plate has one side indented. Place one onto the back of the steering lens farthest from the laser with the indent facing toward the laser. Look through the steering lens and adjust the shuffle plate until it is centered around the laser beam. Lock in place with the two brass knobs. Place the second shuffle plate on the side of the steering lens closest to the laser with the indentation facing away from the laser. Center the slit around the laser beam. Lock the shuffle plate in place with the two brass knobs. Remove the alignment needle and store in its holder. Use the brass locking nut to lock the needle safely in the housing. Locate the beam stop and its two screws. Place the beam stop in the opening of the brass manifold as shown. Insert the screws to hold in place but do not tighten.
turn off the lights and move the beam stop back and forth to align the back reflection through the hole on the shuffle plate. When the back reflection is aligned, tighten down the screws with the M2 hex key. Locate the Delrin sleeve and the Delrin top. Note the Delrin sleeve has a hole and the goniometer has a pin. Slide on the sleeve so it locks into that pin. Slide on the Delrin top. Place the sample cap on the sample cell area. Loosen the locking foot on the NDO and move the NDO back on the detector rail. Using your M4 hex key, remove the face plate on the NDO. Locate the snout. Using the same four screws that just held on the NDO faceplate, attach the snout. Carefully move the NDO back into place, either with the lines you marked or measure 145 millimeters again. Do not slide the NDO more than 145 millimeters. The snout can hit the vat and damage it. Place the NDO eyepiece cap over the eyepiece on the NDO. Assemble the filtration system as described in the alignment manual. Once assembled, attach each end to the short tubes on the brass manifold. Set the filter wheel on the MDO to closed. Locate your detector and note the O-ring. Make sure it is in place and mount it to the NDO with its three screws. Completely tighten down the detector using the M4 hex key. This is Brookhaven's turbo core. Plug in the USB and the other end of the computer and the signal cable into opening A. The other end of the signal cable will be plugged in to the detector. Plug in the power to the detector and the signal cable from the correlator. This is the motor controller. Plug in the USB and the power. To be able to control laser power, plug this end into the laser and the other end into the computer. Now your goniometer is fully assembled. Check that the system is in good alignment by using the goniometer alignment software. You can find a step-by-step -step guide on how to do this at the end of your alignment manual. Once it is in perfect working condition, it should remain that way as long as no knobs are adjusted unintentionally. You can periodically check that the system is still in good alignment by running the alignment software on a routine schedule. Subscribe to our channel to stay tuned for future videos. And as always, feel free to contact Brookhaven Instruments if you have any questions. Thanks for watching!